It is Brew Day, and today I'm going to be brewing an American-style pale ale. Pretty excited. Uh, it's been a little while since I did one of these, but as I'm kind of, we're moving from summer into fall, I'm definitely uh, going to be craving that. So, uh, what I'm going to be trying to aim for here is a beer that's kind of on the lighter end color-wise. Um, it's going to be mainly uh, American two-row. Uh, I'm going to have uh, a, a bit of Munich malt in there for just a little bit of breadiness, and then a splash of C40, just for a little uh, kind of like residual body, um, a little bit of color addition, I suppose, but it shouldn't really impart too much flavor. So uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, so in here I've got enough to brew a, a 10 gallon batch, and I've got 87%, uh, it's uh, actually RAR two-row, um, and then I've got 3% uh, it's sort of like a C40, it's Simpsons Crystal Light, and then I have 10% uh, Canada Molting Munich, and that should just give it a little bit of that breadiness that I'm looking for. So, time to mill it up here. I'm doing this on my Monster Mill 3MM Pro. If you want to check out my uh, walkthrough video of this, uh, this mill build, uh, you can check that out. All right, so I've got my strike water ready. I always go a couple of uh, degrees Celsius or like four or five-ish, whatever degrees Fahrenheit high um, for when I go to strike uh, to mash in here. And I'm going with a three uh, liters per kilogram ratio. That's what I like for my uh, most of my beers. My grain is all nicely milled here. Pour this in, we're gonna get it mixed all up. I've obviously turned off the, turned off the uh, gas here so that we're not getting hotter than we need to. Uh, the water here also on this one, I'm going with the 50-50 uh, blend of RO water and filtered water just because of the hardness of the water here. I just wanted to soften it a little bit. And I also added just a little bit of pH stabilizer to it. Again, just because of the water uh, profile that we've got here. So we've got that, uh, yeah, all nicely mixed up. I'm shooting for a mash temperature here of 66.7 Celsius or 152 Fahrenheit, which kind of should give me a, a really nice, really nice uh, finishing gear here. So I'm just going to get my lock line set up here so that I have a really nice recirc. If you want to check out my brew stand uh, walkthrough video, you can do that too. I kind of show every little part of this and kind of how it works. So anyway, here we are and we're just going to get mashing. You can see what that wort looks like initially there, really quite hazy. That's for sure going to clear up after we uh, go ahead and convert those sugars. One of the nice things about this particular brew is that I'm just doing a single uh, single sack rest there uh, at that 152 Fahrenheit and then mashing out and it's a 60 minute boil so this is uh, a nice quick brew. Well, after that hour, uh, you can see the wort here has cleared up uh, quite a bit. It'll probably clear up just a little bit more as I approach mash out. So I'm going to jack that up to 75 Celsius or around that 168 Fahrenheit range and hold it there for about 15 minutes. Okay, so I've switched my lids and we are now beginning to uh, fly sparge here. So I'm going to go and snag the hops that we're going to need for that first word hopping. So this pale ale is all going to be first wort and late hopping. Um, so just as I've got a little bit of the wort in there, I'm going to be adding 12 grams each of mosaic and cascade. This should give me a nice little uh, blend of like tropical fruity and citrus flavors, which I just love in a pale ale. Um, and uh, those are 12.7% uh, for the mosaic alpha acid and 7.5 uh, for the cascades. So this is giving me a, a good chunk of the bitterness that I need here because I'm targeting uh, 45 IBUs uh, for this beer here. So we're just gonna let those get in there and start to simmer and in a little bit I'll flame this on and uh, he start heading towards a boil. Woo, flame on! Okay, so we just hit a boil. This is obviously a little bit more vigorous than I'm going to have for the majority of it. So I'm just going to let that flame dial back a touch and uh, hit something nice and steady. Um, since I did the first word hopping, that is essentially my bittering hops. Um, and I don't have any hops to add until there are 20 minutes left in the boil. Alright, so with uh, 20 minutes remaining here, I've got uh, my next hop addition. So that is again a 50-50 split, 30 grams each of Mosaic and Cascade. With just over 10 minutes left, I'm just going to add some Super Moss Finings here just to hopefully help result in a somewhat clearer finished product. With 10 minutes left, we have another 50-50 split of, uh, it's 20 grams each this time of Mosaic and Cascade. Okay, we are ready to flame out here. So I'm just gonna do the last 
comp edition here for the Whirlpool. And that's 28 grams each, again, of Mosaic and Cascade. And then I'm just going to quickly take my stainless spoon that's been sitting in here, uh, the majority of the brew, just so it's already nice and clean and not going to mess anything up. Get a really nice Whirlpool here. And that'll just help collect uh, a bunch of that hops and some of the fruit and stuff like that. Just uh, the hot break in the bottom there. All right. Okay, I'm going to let it sit for about 15 minutes. Well, I've begun the process of running off here. Got the plate chiller all hooked up and water flowing, and that wort's coming out quite nicely. So I'm just going to fill these both up and then uh, get them downstairs, uh, attached to the heat wraps and temperature controllers. Well, we got an OG at 1051, which is fantastic. So I'm just quickly rocking these here, swirling them around to help aerate them. Um, with that low original gravity and uh, some really nice rehydrated uh, dry yeast, I'm not super worried about going ahead and like straight up oxygenating them or anything like that. So a minute of this is sufficient. All right, so I've got my rehydrated USO5 right in there, and that was just some water that I sterilized on my pressure counter when I sterilized my plate chiller, uh, some filtered water, and uh, rehydrated it in there for about half an hour. I have that um, stir bar in there so that I could just finish the job if anything wasn't 100% uh, incorporated. Now, just add this like so. And because this is a little bit of a hassle, I will do the second one off camera. Um, but I'll do this to both of them, and they're currently sitting at 69 Fahrenheit, which is probably a degree higher than I would have wanted, but uh, that'll be just fine. Well, the next morning, these uh, both these carboys here are just happily fermenting away, so that is fantastic. Well, reading below the meniscus, this pale ale has finished off at 1012, which is exactly what I wanted. That's fantastic, so it's time to get uh, get it transferred. So I've had these uh, pails off the heat for a couple of days. I took the heat wraps and everything off and uh, just let a little bit of that yeast settle out. And I'm now going to uh, go through the next few steps, which is um, sanitizing uh, a couple of corny kegs and pressure racking into those kegs and then gelatin fining. I'm not going to go through that in this video, but you can check out my videos on the channel that go through that process because it's the exact same thing every time. Well, it is moment of truth time. Let's check out this pale ale. Ignore the fact that this faucet here is disconnected there and it looks kind of ugly. I'm pouring from the other one. I can smell this all day. It's the fresh hop flavor coming out of there. The tropical uh, mosaic hops, you get that nice citrusy cascade in there. Um, super fun. Uh, just classic sort of American IPA. Nice toastiness coming out of the Munich malt. You get that light, light caramel coming from the C40 and uh, just that really nice supporting uh, North American two row malt backbone. Um, bitterness is perfect. It's really nice and drinkable. Um, thirst quenching at the same time and uh, just balancing ever so slightly to the uh, to the hops there. And I mean, come on, look at look at that. Absolutely transparent, just brilliant clarity. Um, so this is exactly what I'm looking for in uh, in an American pale ale and. Uh, I hope you give it a whirl, and until next time, keep Road 11.